Hello family, we bless the name of the Lord for today. He's been great. He continues to be faithful to his promise never to leave us nor forsake us. Today I'm reading Genesis chapter 29 from verse 21 to verse 30. Finally, Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife for my time of service is completed so that I may take her to me as my wife. So Laban gathered together all the men of the place and prepared a wedding feast with wine. But in the evening he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob. And Jacob went in to consummate the marriage with her. Laban also gave Zilpah, his maid, to his daughter Leah as a maid. But in the morning when Jacob awoke, it was Leah who was with him. And he said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not work for you for seven years for Rachel? Why have you deceived and betrayed me like this? But Laban only said, It is not the tradition here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older. Finish the week of the wedding feast for Leah, then he will give you then we will give you Rachel also, and in return you shall work for me for seven more years. So Jacob complied and fulfilled Leah's week of celebration. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, as his second wife. Laban also gave Bilhah, his mate, to his daughter, Rachel, as a mate. So Jacob consummated his marriage and lived with Rachel as his wife. And he loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban for another seven years. Today, I want to share with you that attraction and attachment makes you prefer a person over another as far as marriage is concerned. This is the story of Jacob, that Jacob had served Laban faithfully for seven years. Seven long years, this man, as a result of the love that he had for Rachel, served, was not paid any wages, because the wages that he accrued over that period of time was what he had promised which should be used as the bride price for Rachel so that he could have Rachel as his wife. Now, the story makes us understand that unfortunately, Laban deceived Jacob by giving Leah to him instead of Rachel. And so the story goes on to say that Laban didn't even apologize. He actually just says to Jacob, well, it's not the tradition that the first child, um, the younger gets married before the older. And um, so he says to Jacob on this occasion that, well, I can actually give you Rachel, but if you want me to give you Rachel, you need to work for me for another seven years. However, if you consummate the marriage and you do what is required of you as as far as the marriage rights to Leah is concerned, then I will give you Rachel immediately after your one week celebration with Leah and um, you will still work for me for seven years. The Bible says that Jacob, this man who knew what love was, who understood that love is long suffering, love is patience and so on, could have actually said, you know what, at the end of the day, it's a woman I want. Um, why do I have to work for another seven years again, just so that I can have Rachel as my wife and so on. But this man of integrity, knowing the pain that he himself was going through and recognizing that Rachel could have also been going through so much pain and hurt, knowing that her sister had actually pulled a fast one on him, decides, I believe, for the purposes of integrity and love that could not be shifted, decides to accept Laban's conditions and he gets Rachel as his wife. And the Bible says he loved Rachel more than Leah. Now, when you hear that phrase, you would think, oh, well, but he was a man of faith. He was a man of God. And, you know, people of God should be no right and should love everybody. But the truth of the matter is that this story tells us that as far as being attracted and falling in love with somebody is concerned, 
you cannot feel that same emotion towards everybody because if it were so, people would not necessarily want to identify a person that they want to get married to. And so today I just want to share with you, particularly for anyone who um, is not yet married or is in a relationship, that we've got to be so truthful with ourselves that we need to realize that as far as marriage is concerned, we do not marry just because maybe um, somebody has got um, a particular physique or maybe somebody has got a particular job, is has a particular so, um, social standing in society and so on. Often, you marry somebody and you're in love with that person, not just because you understand what love is, but because there's something about that person that you're drawn to, you're attracted to. And um, that was what it was for Jacob. No matter how the fact that Leah was an, a woman, yes, he had had sexual relations with her and all of that, it, did, it still wasn't enough for him to feel in love with Leah as much as he loved Rachel. And so even as I share this, it is to really say that if you're in a relationship and perhaps is not yet married and you're thinking, maybe, you know, this person, I'm forcing it. There's something that I can't pinpoint. I, I just feel something is missing. I would encourage you to please listen to your instincts and to take to it to God in prayer. Because can you imagine what life would have been like for Leah for all those years when he was in this, she was in this marriage? Jacob was a faithful man. He made sure that her needs were provided and so on and so forth. When she went, goes on to have children, he ensured that the children were provided for because he loved his children. But to be in a marriage where you know that no matter what you do, you still seem to be competing with somebody. No matter what you do, your husband doesn't love you the way he should love you, the way he should be attracted to you and so on. It would be a very painful situation. And so I just really want to use this opportunity to encourage all of us that the fact that we are people of God doesn't necessarily mean that you feel attracted to anybody and so on. So if you're in a relationship and you know deep down there's something that you know it, it, it doesn't sit well with you, your instinct tells you that this thing or this person, I'm sometimes forcing myself to feel like I really am attracted to them and so on. I would ask you to please pause and I will ask you to please take this thing to God in prayer because what you do not want to do is to pretend that all is well, because in a matter of time, it will tell. Because when Leah was being given to Jacob, she probably thought, oh, you know what, once he's had his way with me, once I've lived with him a couple of years, he will get over it. He might love me as much as he loves my sister. Or maybe he would not even end up marrying Rachel. Nobody really knows the full story of what goes on in her head. But being humans, we can try and deduce that perhaps those there were certain rationales that they had that made them think herself and her father that made them think, oh, don't worry, all will be OK. But all was never well with her. She goes on to have many children and, and so on and so forth. But the Bible makes it clear that in spite of all that, Jacob loved Rachel more than he loved Leah. And so as I say this as well, just in case you found yourself in a marriage and you know deep down that perhaps you're in a loveless marriage. Again, I can only sympathize with you because it is a painful experience, I believe, for anyone to be in a marriage where you know that you're not loved. Some men might pretend to it or women might pretend, but you know, based on actions, the person might be hiding it. But every now and then something happens and it makes you know that really and truly this person is just tolerating me. Because you're in a marriage and the Bible makes it clear that perhaps um, that God hates divorce, I would again encourage you to take this matter up to God in prayer. And in your prayer to ask God to pour your heart out to God and to ask God to show you what to do. Let God speak to your particular situation because what God might say to person A in that similar situation might be different to what God will say to you. Bearing in mind that God loves each and every one of us dearly and his will for us is that we will have his very best. And so if you're in a marriage and you'll feel that it's a loveless marriage, God knows and he has the solution to whatever your situation might be. So however long it might take for you to get a word from God, 
I would encourage you to really do so. And for those that perhaps are in, find themselves in this situation, maybe you're going through the pain alone. Nobody even knows. You've never had the courage to share it with somebody. There comes times when, again, you might need to speak or to share what you're going through with somebody so that they can stand with you. Somebody who the Lord will lay on your heart. Somebody that you know that when you confide in them, your personal matter will not be basically um, broadcast all over the place. And if you're not sure who that somebody can be, again, I would encourage you to pray to God and ask God to show you who you can confide in. And you're going to confide in that person because sometimes we need other people to give us godly wisdom and counsel. And you may need that. And also you may need to share this with somebody because somebody, that person could actually be the one who stands with you in prayer. But as I say, if you've not found yourself in that scenario and you're in a relationship that is not yet a marriage, please, please, please do listen to your hearts. Go to God in prayer and see what God says to you. And if God tells you to walk away because you're going to end up being in a marriage where you're not loved, then again, I would encourage you to ask God to give you the grace to do whatever he's telling you to do. Saying this, for anybody that might be in, in a relationship that perhaps is, is um, physically abusive to the point where you maybe know that perhaps your life is literally on the line. Again, I would encourage you to please seek professional counsel and advice. Confide in somebody because sometimes when you're in the middle of, of some of these things, you're not able to think properly you're not able to really make objective um, decisions and wise decisions because you're clouded. Your judgment becomes clouded so that you can get help, so that you can get somebody who will give you their godly perspective as to what to do. And most importantly, in all of this, seek the face of God and let's see what God will say to you. And whatever he tells you to do, it may not make sense. You don't always need to understand why God asks you to do something. But trust him that he knows what is best. And if you know somebody who is in that scenario, and perhaps you you feel that if care is not taken, they might go down the path that could endanger their lives. Again, I ask you to pray for God to give you counsel, to know how to maybe um, go and have a conversation. And maybe God might not even ask you to have a conversation, but to pray for those people um, so that they do not go down the path that could literally leave them in pain to pain in in a, um cause them pain and so on but before i pray for our, our enemies and those who persecute us as usual we're going over our memory verse matthew five forty four. it says but i say to you love that is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so father this morning we bring before you And we ask that, Lord, you, put, you bless them with your peace. Bless their going out and bless their coming in. Bless them with the knowledge of Christ. Bless them with a spirit of humility, of compassion. Bless them, O oh God, almighty Savior, so that they will know the truth. That, O oh God, except they give their life to Christ, that they will not have for God eternal life. That the truth, O oh God, almighty, of your word will be revealed to them. That they will know your truth and that your truth will set them free. Bless them, O God Almighty, in ways that God Almighty, you alone can bless them. So that God, not only will they live a glorious, a successful life here on earth, but that they will be in right standing with you, Lord Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.